Good evening there, everybody. What is happening? Hopefully, y'all are having a wonderful day today. So when it comes down to it, I thought that I, of course, would give my post-fight thoughts and my post-fight breakdown and review of the very interesting fight between Joe Joyce and the contender that he ended up fighting today, Mr. Zhang. And I'm going to only call him Mr. Zhang because I'm not necessarily 100% sure how to pronounce his first name with 100% certainty. I think that I heard it during the announcements, of course, during his record, because uh, I just recently watched the fight probably about a half hour ago. And unfortunately, I did not know at all that this fight was happening today. I did not know that Joe Joyce was fighting at all today. Uh, I did not hear anything about it. And usually I take a look at the boxing schedule to see uh, what up-and-coming fights there are. But I don't really remember hearing anything about this fight. I don't remember seeing any promotion for it. Uh, just me personally. Now, maybe that's because I have not been uh, in the ESPN app as much lately. I'm not necessarily sure. But very unfortunate that I could not watch this fight live. Especially because of the upset that it ended up being. It would have been very interesting to watch. But I did end up watching it just most recently. And, of course, for those of you that did not hear the results... Mr. Zhang did end up pulling off the upset. And not only did he end up pulling off the upset against that of Joe Joyce, he pretty much gave him a complete beating. He pretty much gave him a complete boxing lesson. And it was to the point to where the referee and the doctor thought that it was best to stop the fight in the sixth round. And that's exactly what happened. Uh, to the point to where Joe Joyce's right eye was swollen up to where I believe either A, he could not see out of it, or he could very barely see out of it. So hopefully Joe Joyce is okay. Hopefully he does not have a broken orbital eye bone. But it is very possible because a lot of the times when I see an eye swell up to that degree, it usually uh, means that there may possibly be a broken orbital eye bone. So we'll see about that. It would be very unfortunate because Joe Joyce, in my view, he still could possibly make a run at the heavyweight title. But of course, a lot of technical inefficiencies and deficiencies were shown in his game today. Uh, the lack of head movement at times can be a very big problem. And a lot of the times, even though I think he keeps his hands up well enough, this was really the first fighter uh, in Zhang that really was able to expose some of the deficiencies in Joe Joyce's game because he was not afraid of Joe Joyce's size and he was not afraid of Joe Joyce's power. The other two fighters that fought Joe Joyce in terms of Danny Dubois and that of Joseph Parker, I think that those are two fighters to where they pretty much have a primary game plan and once that game plan gets thrown out the window, they're not really going to know what to do. And I think once the power of Joe Joyce got to Danny Dubois, especially because of the inexperienced fighter that he is, at least, you know, competing against that of top 10 contenders, I think that, you know, he pretty much acquiesced that he was in deep trouble. Uh, and once that eye started hurting him, and I can't remember if it was a broken orbital eye bone or not, he, of course, pretty much quit in that fight, which, of course, is understandable if he had a broken orbital eye bone. But then, of course, against Joseph Parker, where Joe Joyce, of course, ended up proving me correctly that he was more than likely going to win that fight. Uh, because Joseph Parker is another fighter that if you let him, he can outbox you. It's a little bit like Adrian Broner. If you let him, he can do the things that he wants to against you. And you have to be very careful because he's very speedy and he has great power and he's a good athlete. But if you really put the pressure on Joseph Parker and if you show that you're there to actually win the fight, it's going to be a very difficult night and a very difficult fight for Joseph Parker to win that type of fight. And Joseph Parker could not handle the size, he could not handle the power, and he could not handle uh, the game plan of that of Joe Joyce because it was just too much pressure for him. Well, Zhang ended up showing that that pressure was not too much for him. And this is something that Caleb Plant was supposed to do against that of David Benavidez which is to show a fighter that is going to plan and try to break you down and bully you and rough you up throughout the whole entire fight and impose their size and their power against you that, you know what, you're just not going to bully me around throughout the whole entire fight. Now, of course, one could argue, well, you know what, that may not be a complete fair comparison because Caleb Plant obviously is not bigger than David Benavidez. He doesn't have more power than David Benavidez. He can't fight exactly what like Zhang did against that of Joe Joyce and stand in the range at times in exchange with him. And that's understandable to a degree. But Caleb Plant, in my view, he does not have bad enough power <laughs> overall to the point to where he probably could have not tried at least a little bit. Now, of course, he does not have a grade level power, but he still could have stood in the range at least a little bit with David Benavidez. And that's what you're going to have to do a little bit, not stay in the range to the point to where you're vulnerable. 
but there's going to be times to where you are going to have to stay in the pocket a little bit or you're going to have to stay right there in the middle of the ring and show that fighter what you possibly can do because if you retreat against that fighter the whole entire time that gives them more confidence and it also gives them more opportunities and more opportunities for them to see your incoming punches well, what Zhang did against Joe Joyce is that he pretty much threw that left hand down the pipe. He showed that he was not going to let Joe Joyce bully him. And Zhang basically said, hey, look, I'm 280 pounds. I'm about six foot seven, six foot eight. You know, sure, you're a big guy and you can impose your will. You can impose your size and your power against a lot of these other fighters. But that shit ain't going to work on me. And that's exactly what ended up winning him this fight. You know, and that's not the only fighter that recently ended up being a quote unquote bully fighter. And I'm not going to call Joe Joyce really a bully fighter necessarily because he can fight, fight excuse me in a multitude of ranges it just looks a little bit clunky because he's not the fastest of fighters he doesn't have the fastest of feet and he doesn't have the fastest of punches and on top of that his head movement is not necessarily a grade but he can fight in a multitude of ranges it's just always going to look a little bit awkward but Zhang was able to show Joe Joyce that he pretty much can fight in any range with him. He can fight going on the back foot. He can fight going on the front foot. He can fight a little bit in the pocket with Joe Joyce, or at least to the point to where he's able to hurt him on the inside and that he's able to win some of those exchanges. And that's exactly what you have to do against a fighter that's going to try to break you down. Uh, you have to try to show them that you're not going to bully me. Now, depending on the fighter, you're going to have to establish distance a little bit differently. But Zhang showed Joe Joyce that I'm a little bit quicker than you. In <laughs> excuse me, in terms of my feet and also in terms of my punching speed. Uh, and on top of that, you know, I'm pretty accurate myself. And once again, I'm 280 pounds. I got power on my side as well. You're not just going to bully me around like some of these other fighters. And because Joe Joyce, because he does not have the best of head movement or at least the quickest of head movement, he was able to get hit with that left hand almost every single time that Zhang ended up throwing it. Every single time that Zhang ended up throwing a left hand straight down the pipe, I swear to God, I'm pretty sure Joe Joyce got hit with it. Zhang showed once again that he was not afraid to exchange with Joe Joyce or at least stay in there and really show that he was willing to win the fight. And that's what ended up winning him this fight because he didn't let Joe Joyce bully him around the ring. But Joe Joyce, he just really uh, has never had the quickest defeat. He's never had the quickest of punches. At times, his punches can be a little bit too advertised. And as Timothy Bradley so well said throughout this fight, he was not moving his head off the center line well enough. He was not moving his head well enough, and it needed to. Uh, you know, a lot of the times, Joe Joyce, you know, even though his lack of head movement can be a problem, or at least his slowish head movement, it oftentimes can work because I don't think he's ever really fought a fighter that, as of yet, has ever really tried to win the fight against him. And some people may say, what are you talking about? You know, Joseph Parker and Daniel Dubois, they put up somewhat of winning efforts. Well, once again, once those fighters realized that they were in trouble, they pretty much knew that they were going to lose that fight or that they were in deep waters. And Danny Dubois and Joseph Parker, they don't come across to me as fighters that can mentally handle that type of pressure. It just is what it is, especially Joseph Parker. And Joe Joyce is able to prove me in that fight that Joseph Parker was what I always thought that he was, which is that he's the most overrated heavyweight probably of the past several years. It just is what it is. But Joe Joyce, let's just say if a rematch were to happen, he is going to have to keep his hands up much better in the rematch than what he did in this fight. A lot of the times, Joe Joyce looked to try and outbox Zhang in that in the middle of the ring when he realized that the pressure game plan wasn't going to completely work. And a lot of the times, you know, his boxing can work against guys that, once again, he can impose his will over. He's a guy that's six foot six with an 80-inch reach. He can do that maybe against certain guys like a Joseph Parker or some other guys, maybe if that pressure style is not working. But Zhang was a guy that I believe had a longer reach than him, or if not a longer reach than him, somewhat of a comparable reach. He had enough power, you know, to bully that of Joe Joyce if he needed to, or in order to, you know, pretty much outdo him when he needed to. Uh, and on top of that, his feet were faster. You know, his head movement was better than that of Joe Joyce's. Uh, you know, and he, you know, he didn't really keep his hands up in my view, at least from what I remember to the best of his ability either. But he was able to do it well enough to where he was avoiding most of Joe Joyce's punches. And once again, Joe Joyce is not someone that I would call Speedy McGreedy. He's not a guy that, of course, has the quickest of punches. So a lot of the times he's, you know, relying on his pressure and he's relying on his accuracy. And, you know, usually his accuracy is pretty good. But this was a fighter that was able to keep him at range, use his lead hand as a distance judger very decently well. And Joe Joyce, once again, he was trying to outbox a guy in the middle of the ring sometimes that... He should have really been trying to completely push up against the ropes 
and really just try to rip to the body and really just try to out pressure him really overall just try to bully him now the question is is that did joe joyce <laughs> overall kind of give up on that because a he didn't think that he could or b because maybe he thought that the better game plan was to outbox his guy in the middle of the ring it's not 100 percent clear but joe joyce in my view let's just say if a rematch happens he is going to have to try to pressure this guy because I'm not really sure if he can win a mid-range boxing match with this guy. This guy, once again, he has a type of style that's always going to be troubling for that of Joe Joyce, which is a guy that has power, which is a guy that can compete with his size and his reach, which is a guy that can take advantage sometimes of his defensive and you know offensive inefficiencies, which means that sometimes he does not keep his hands up when he needs to. There will be certain fights where he does, but certain fights where he doesn't as much as what he needs to. This was an example of that. And on top of that, his head does not move quite enough. His head does not move off the center line quite enough. And Zhang was able to expose all those deficiencies in this fight. So if Joe Joyce is going to win this rematch, he's going to have to establish the jab uh, a lot more. He's going to have to rip an early body attack. His hands are going to have to stay up the whole entire time throughout the fight. He cannot just stay there in the mid-range with his hands down and with his head barely moving in the range against a guy that can compete with him in terms of the reach and the size. Because he really made it very easy for Zhang to pretty much out-counter him and to basically pretty much hit him around the ring. He pretty much stood right in front of him like a sitting duck, you know, so it is what it is. So he is going to have to get better in that rematch if a rematch even potentially happens. I would like to see a rematch between the two just to see what possibly Joe Joyce can do. But it's also risky. Joe Joyce is 37 years old. He's going to turn 38 this year. And, you know, once again, he was almost sort of getting there to that top five ranking. You know, kind of in there with the Tyson Furies, the Wilders, the AJs, and the Alexander Usyk. He probably would have been about a level below them, you know. And certain people were already starting to put him above Dillian White and Andrew Ruiz and some of those other guys now it's like where do you necessarily put him and the bigger question is is that will he get a heavyweight title shot even if he does end up winning the rematch we'll see about that but unfortunately this does put Joe Joyce in a little bit of a bind and he is gonna have to go back to the drawing board he's gonna have to be much better uh, in the rematch if a rematch happens once again his head movement is gonna have to be better uh, you know, his hands are going to have to be up. His defense is going to have to be a lot better than what it was. And he's also going to have to use his feet a little bit more in that fight. And I don't think that Joe Joyce, you know, a lot of people, of course, they criticize him because of certain deficiencies. I don't think that he has as many deficiencies as what people say, but obviously enough to the point to where he obviously needs to work on some things. I don't think his feet have ever really been bad. He's not really a flat footed fighter, but he's just not a guy that has quick feet. But the biggest problems with Joe Joyce, especially exposed in this fight, is that A, he does not have good enough head movement. He needs to establish better head movement. And he needs to have a better defense. Uh, that's what he showed in this fight. Those are the main deficiencies that he needs to work on in this fight. And he also is going to have to use his feet here and there to avoid that left hand from Zhang because I really don't remember Joe Joyce moving out of the range to avoid that at any time whatsoever. There might be certain times to where he's also going to have to clinch with that as Zhang or that he's going to have to rip to the body up against the ropes or that if Zhang tries to counter, maybe rip him to the body. You know, of course, don't put yourself in a vulnerable position. Uh, you know, but he is going to have to really take it to Zhang in that of the rematch. So let's see what happens. Uh, and I remember Zhang once again, I remember him giving a very tough fight to that of Philip Hergovich. And I remember seeing this in the ESPN app today. And I said, oh, damn, Joe Joyce ended up losing to this guy. Where did I see this guy before? And I actually thought that he had previously fought Joe Joyce. But then I remembered he gave a very tough fight to that of the Croatian guy. I believe Philip Hergovich, who, of course, has a lot of hype behind him right now. In the heavyweight division because i believe he was very good in that of the amateurs so we'll see what happens this could be uh you know of course it's a big boost for zhang's career how long will it last we'll see uh, if a rematch does not end up happening what i see zhang you know possibly getting a title shot i'm not sure about a title shot uh maybe against Usyk. maybe i'm not quite sure um would i see him getting a fight against either Usyk or fury probably not but you never know uh, if a rematch does not happen between these two, I would like to see Zhang against Dillian White or Zhang against Andrew Ruiz, one of those guys. I'd like to see him against those guys, possibly even AJ Anthony Joshua. That Those would be very interesting fights. But I would personally love to see a rematch between these two, just to see what possibly Joe Joyce can do to maybe adjust in that fight.
because <laughs> once again, this was really the first fight to where a fighter was really there to win the fight against Joe Joyce and really did not break down and crumble under the pressure. So we'll see what happens. But anyways, very interesting fight. Great performance by Zhang. I think that I gave Joe Joyce maybe one round in the fight after the ass kicking that he took. I think that was round three. And that was really because Zhang did not do anything. But once again, if a rematch happens between these two, my eyes are going to be all over it. Very interesting fight. But anyways, congratulations to Mr. Zhang. Hopefully Joe Joyce can possibly rebound from this because he does not have much time left if he possibly wants to win that of a heavyweight title. So let's see what happens. Anyways, that's pretty much about it for today. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll talk to you all later. And we'll see what ends up happening with this in the near future.